Hello guys, it's a boy here, the Blanc Pandit, um, aka Tari on AFTV, and I'm here with one of the legends of Arsenal, one of them legends, um, Lee Judges, welcome. You're my first guest, and I hope it's going to be fun. I'm <laughs> very honoured, very honoured to be your first guest. I'm honoured, I'm honoured I'm honored to have you on here, honestly. <laughs> right, so let's just get straight into it. The topic of the day, the topic of the week, probably the topic of one of the you know, centuries, probably gonna, you know, outshine um, um, William Gallas, Granny Shaka. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Granny Shaka. So, um, the fans were angry, Shaka was angry, who is gonna lose? That's what I got about to find out now because we don't know. Um, we all know what happened during the weekend and it was not the best thing to see. It wasn't the best thing to see as an Arsenal fan. It wasn't the best thing to see as a football fan. It wasn't the best thing that anyone would like to, to see, really, because it was. I think it was disgusting um, from both sides, in my opinion. It was disgusting from both sides, but the fans and Shaka, I thought both of us were wrong in our own way. Um, and, and there's this saying that says, two wrongs can't make a right. And I think in this situation, it kind of fits that bill. It's gone to a point now that I'm not sure um, many fans are going to forgive him for that and I think he's also very angry at this point in time that he probably doesn't want to forgive the fans but in the world we live in I think 60,000 people are always going to win the battle against one man so, <laughs> so it is what it is so Lee um, how, do you think this is gonna, how do you think this is going to pan out really for Shaka and for the fans and for Arsenal do you know what I don't know I really don't know I've never experienced anything like this before um, I don't really know how it's going to go, honestly. Uh, things have... Um, I've never seen this before. I've never experienced before. I've never experienced seeing that from a yep. player. I think why, why it's happened is because the fans are, are restless because there's so much uh, things not going right at the moment from the manager, the way we're playing, the results. And also, they've never been quite happy with uh, Granite Shaka being a captain. Yeah. Um, yep. And, you know, playing every week. Um, but he's not the only one that's not been playing well and um, yeah. and been been keeps getting selected. But because he's the captain, it probably blows up a little bit more and, and highlights it a little bit more. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, um, he wasn't actually taken off because he was playing badly. It was just a tactical decision. But you know, I've seen other players walk off slowly before, and um, uh, you know. But let's let's not get this right. This has been brewing for a for the last three or four games certainly against Aston Villa it started it happened at Sheffield United yeah. and it also happened on um, on Sunday and obviously Granit Xhaka is a human being um, it's not very nice to if he put himself if everybody put themselves in his shoes you know I mean he's giving it his all he may not be playing as well as what the fans would like him to be he might be feeling the same himself but to be booed by your own supporters must be very heartbreaking and yeah. obviously upsetting for him. He's reacted in, in a way that um, he shouldn't have. But, you know, it's the chicken and the egg situation mm -hmm. it, where, you know, if the fans do their job properly and support, then then, he, then that doesn't happen. It was moronic cheering. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. It was moronic cheering at um, Sheffield United. Yeah. The man's not silly. It's you not know, him. we all know it was. And it just got worse by his reaction. He shouldn't have done that, you yeah. know. And at this moment in time, he's talking about apologies and all that. I don't think that at this moment in time, he's still probably angry. So, yeah. but, but what it does show, and I think that trying, I'm not sticking up for him in any shape or form. The one thing that it does show is that he does care because if if he didn't care, he wouldn't have got upset and been like that. So he obviously yeah. cares. That the fans don't like him at this moment in time yeah. and appreciate what he's doing. So. I take that on board as a, as a positive. Uh, when you look at it, there's so many negatives about it. You know, it's not been managed right. Let's be honest, with, by the manager. Yeah. It's not been. You know, uh, people don't want him as captain. But you know, I look at it and feel that there's no captains uh, in the whole squad. Yeah. Something that we could have addressed in the summer, but we chose not to do. We've not got no real leaders. So he's being um, bantered about and criticised for that, which is not his fault. And the, and the other thing is what I think is is also one of the big big issues of it all. And a big, big problem for Emery is that is the, the players 
obviously he's very, very popular with the players. Yeah. And I feel that if Emery, you know, Emery's not come out today and, and took the captaincy away from him because I feel that he's been thrown under the bus once. And I think that if Emery threw him under the bus again, he could lose it's, it's, the, it's gonna, the yeah, players. It's gonna, yeah, he's going to lose the players. He's going to probably lose a lot of confidence in himself. And I think this is not the first time we've seen this in Arsenal, really. Um, there's a boy. Um, I think there was um, there was a time, I don't know if you can remember, a Sharvin. Now, there was a time when Chamberlain was being taken off and Ashavin was supposed to be brought on. And at that point in time, people were already getting sort of fed up with Ashavin, he's lost confidence and everything. I think Chamberlain was playing so well in that game. And then they brought on Ashavin and there were a lot of jeers and cheers and everything that, you know, what are you doing? You know, you, you're bringing Ashavin on and, you know, he was so devastated. And I think that was the last season that Ashavin played for us, really. Um, and I think in Aguirre's case, Aguirre said sometimes he didn't want to come to training. You know, um, he 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 was so he felt so bad, he felt so dejected, he felt so left out. That the worst feeling was for your own fans, you know, to boo you. And I think sometimes I think we fans kind of go overboard, you know, going on social media, especially in the social media era now, where you, you're free to do or write whatever you want to write on people's pages. Imagine waking up and you're seeing threats to your wife who is pregnant. Um, you know, sort of abuse and curses and all whatnot, and it, it, it's so hard to see. And what baffles me is the fact that we fans feel that we are right and correct to do that, but we forget that these guys are human beings first before they are footballers, and they have emotions as well. So it's quite, it, it's a sticky situation right now because, like I said, you cannot win against sixty thousand people or much more. If you look at all the, you know, if you look at all the millions of fans of Arsenal that are all over the world, they're going to go on social media and say a lot of things about him. So, I guess right now what they have to do is damage control. And, like you rightly said, it's not been managed properly. So, how are they going to manage the situation? Because Emery is kind of taking his time to respond. Whenever he's asked a question in a press conference about Shaka, he, he, I think the last one he did today, he said, um, um, Shaka is very devastated that he came to training, but he showed he was devastated, but he was a professional in training, he trained very well. And he also said um, he's definitely not going to give up again. Um, and he's asked him to apologize. But apparently, I don't think Shaka wants to apologize at this point in time because in his own mind he feels, no, I'm not, I'm not going to apologize, I put my best, I'm trying my best, you know, for this team. But, but then they don't appreciate me, you know, they're taking me off and they, you know, they're laughing and happy that I'm being taken off the pitch. I think this is probably what is on his own mind. But at the end of the day, the world we live in, he's never going to win that battle. That's just the honest truth. He's never well, going to win that battle. He's not going to win that battle. No. And, and at this moment in time, you know, this, this, you know, let the dust start settle down first. You know, obviously, emotions are running high from the fans. Emotions are running high probably with him as well. So, you know, I, I don't see there's an issue at the moment. It's We've got the, the, the Caribou Cup game tomorrow, which he probably wouldn't have been playing in it. Anyway, yeah, there's been yeah. four or five players left yeah. out, so he would have probably been one of them anyway. So yeah. not not a problem. Obviously, then they'll have to deal with it come come Friday, because obviously, like Saturday, is important. But yeah. no, the the worry from the, the point there is that we we've got a massive game on Saturday, and you know I don't want this always. Is he going to be playing? Is he not? Are the fans going to boo him? And if 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 Emery decides to play him, and decides to put him as captain, then that's Emery's decision. And we've we've got to um, not not necessarily back the manager's decision, but you've got to support the team. And yeah. if he goes out there in the red and white shirt for that ninety minutes, I'm I'm going to encourage and hopefully we get the win. Yeah, because the only way you can get the best out of him is to encourage him. And this is what I was trying to tell the gentleman I had yeah. a debate on the TV with. But you know he he was boiling, was angry. I could get that. Um, but then again, it takes a lot of um, discipline for you to sit back and analyze what kind of help the players and what doesn't. But we fans don't have that time. You see what I mean? No. <laughs> well, listen, we're, look, fans are all emotional after games as, as, as much as players are. You know, yeah. there's a lot of emotion going on there. My biggest worry now is if um, he does play on, on, on Saturday, is every if things are not going well, Emery's got to take him off, is, and it's going to be subject to it again. You know what I mean? So is he going to keep him on to the dead range um, of the uh, team? So this is a problem, you know. I'm, so there's, there's if, I'm, if I'm going to stop you there, I don't think Emery is going. I don't think Emery is that stupid because at, at this point in time, the only way Emery might put him on the pitch is after he apologizes to the fans. That's one. And even if he apologizes, a lot of fans are going to come out and say, "Oh yeah, so it took you this long to apologize to us." Do you know what I mean? So for me, yeah. I don't think, I really don't think he's going to play him. 
it's probably gonna give him two 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 games off, in my opinion, for him to get himself back, get himself in order when the dot settles and he's gonna play him because I think it's a bit too early to play him on Saturday against Wolves. This is just what I think. At the beginning of the season, we're trying to play out the back several times. We're trying to play out the back um, on a continuous basis and I think it's kind of changed that now because I felt that we were playing out of the back and playing into trouble most of the times. That's all I could see in our team. And it sounded to me that that was a very stupid thing to do because you see it's not working and you can see that you've been made by many of the teams that play us. For instance, Watford. They, they, you know, they, they almost ripped us in that game as far as I'm concerned because we were so poor. I think that's the worst game I've seen Arsenal play in God knows how many years. And I think they also made the record on us of 30 something shots. Um, since they started taking the record of the Premier League, they've made a record on Arsenal. Um, but I still think I've seen some changes in the last couple of games. I don't know if you agree with me on that. Yeah, I, I, I've seen I, I, some sorry. changes. He hasn't been playing out the back as much as no, you know he's been doing, well. which simply means he's kind of listening to the fans or he's actually watching the oh hey hand and this thing is not working. And people are asking the question, why are you playing this kind of style? If you go back to PSG, that was actually how he plays in PSG. But then again, what he failed to understand quickly is the fact that you don't have a high press, you don't have runners in the Premier League the way you do. So you don't have runners in, 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 in the French League the way you have in Premier League. And exactly. in, we're more athletic in the Premier League than I mean, it's most athletic, probably the most athletic um, league in the whole world. So I think it took him a bit of time to understand that, hey, this, this thing ain't working for me. I need to change my approach, I need to change my way. But, but then again, in this new era that we are, I think people are so impatient, fans are so impatient. Um, people don't have the time anymore to be waiting because we we as Arsenal fans, we've suffered, we haven't won the league since 2004. And I think he's been put in a situation whereby he needs to manage the group of players that cannot play the kind of football he wants to bring to the um, um, into the team. Now, he noticed that playing at the back is not working because our players are not very good on the ball. Like, players that are supposed to be, you know, very, very good on the ball, playing out of the back like Barcelona or Bayern Munich. And what he needs to do now is to change his playing style. Um, do you think fans have given him enough time? Do you think he's gotten the players that he wants to be able to get something out of them for us to be able to challenge for the titles? Or do you think he's not just a very good coach? Well, listen, he's, he's obviously a decent enough coach because he wouldn't have been coaching at this level, you know, but yeah. the fact is the matter is, yeah, I think he's had more than enough time. The more, the more players that are his players are in this team than it was last last season, you know, um, and under, uh, what, what, what he hasn't done is he's, he hasn't addressed the weaknesses that every Arsenal fan wanted the new coach to come in. We was an attacking, flaring side played um, some very very attractive football created lots of chances and scored lots of goals but we was as weak as anything at the back yeah what's happened now is we're a weak at, at the back and probably even weaker at the back now than what we was mm -hmm. and we've lost that flamboyancy up front and, and the style so for me we've 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 gone backwards in, in all areas of the field Yes, we lost a couple of players, say one like I.E. Aaron Ramsey, which we all know was going to be hard to replace because he gives us the goals. Yeah. But we've got three exciting players up front that are not being used properly. Um, a defence that um, creaks every time someone comes and attacks it. Wait, wait, so, so how, how do you reckon? The, how do you reckon the attack? How do you reckon the attack should be fixed? Because if you say it's not being used properly, um, I think Aubameyang played most of the left hand side last season, and he still had the golden boot. Even if I think he's still less effective on the wings, to be honest with you. But then again, you've got like a Z who can play, you know, a holding. He can hold up play up front, basically. He can hold up play better. He's very, than very good at doing. Very good at doing that. You've got Pepe as well, but they're, they're yeah. not being. They're, what's, what's happened is they're not being. What I say, they're not being used properly for. How many shots has Bamiang had in the last couple of games? What uh, I, don't, I don't think he's been as potent as what he was last season. Um, the, the, uh, the way we play at the moment is uh, our point of attack comes from our fullbacks, which basically they get to a certain areas and then the crosses ain't good enough, so we're not feeding the players properly. We're not feeding them properly. With the, we haven't got somebody in there that can um, fed uh, balls through into little tight areas that we had, like when Mesut Ozil was playing, or Aaron Ramsey used to do that as mm -hmm. well. Santi Cazula used to do it when, when he played. 
um, we had three or four that Jack Wiltshire could do that role. We had three or four that could do that. Now we've got none. Yeah. You know, we've got Sabias that, that's more of a, a player that passes through the lines, but from further back. Yeah. But also in, in that point, you know, the midfield is getting changed, chops and changed week in, week out. One week it's Sabias, next week it's Willock, next week it's Sun. So, so there's no continuity going through it all. And then on on Sunday when you're playing at home against a team like Crystal Palace your three forwards hardly ever had a shot I, don't, I can't remember Aubameyang having a shot Pepe I can't remember having a shot and I think Lacazette had one which was a good save from their keeper mm. but you're not getting them into the game you're not you know um, away from home they're not being exploited as, as a counter attacking team mm. it's just all things that are wrong and, and you know the midfield shape is wrong where we're not creating but more importantly when we've lost the ball one or two passes and they're on the edge of our box so they're not doing their job going forward and they're not doing their job going back and that's where the frustrations lie with the fans so, that's so, why they get onto Jacker's back so, as well so what I mean look it's a difficult one yeah let's just look at the midfield we've got Willock we've got Ceballos we've got Torreira we've got Guendouzi we've got Shaka these are the three midfielders we've got the game that Willock started he wasn't very good Let's be honest. I think that was against Sheffield, I think. And he was upset in halftime, I think. Yeah, that should be the game. Um, he didn't play so well um, when he started. People were, you know, having a go at the manager. Like, Why? Why are you going to start Willock? You're supposed to start Ceballos. Meanwhile, I remember very well the Bournemouth game. The Bournemouth game before went on international break. People yeah. were making the argument for Willock to start. People were making the argument for Willock to start. Now, the game after the international break, we play Willock. He didn't play well, he got substituted. People were then saying he should play Ceballos. Is it possible that we fans are a bit just, you know, we're a bit fickle when something doesn't work, then we, you well, know? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, you know, the reason, you know, like, they're being set up to foul, weren't they? You know, Willock, I think, had one bad game, one half of a, of a game where he didn't play well at against Sheffield United, you know, so, so, so what? You know what I mean? One half doesn't mean to say that you're, you, you can turn it around in the second half, but he wasn't given that opportunity. Um, Sabias comes in, you know, in and out with with Willock if you if you want to look at it that way, and then people turn around and say, "Oh, he's not doing the business. Pull him out," you know. But you know, you've got to say to yourself, right? Well, you've got to believe in what system you're going to play with. You know, you're, you're playing but, at this but, moment. But, but during Arsene Wenger, but during, during I mean, during Arsene Wenger days, we complained that he wasn't proactive when things are not going right. We complained as fans that he waits till you know 75 minutes. His old methods of doing things, he waits till 75 minutes, sometimes 80 minutes before he makes changes and all that. And then yeah. we're like, oh yeah. And I think this worked for Emery when he came. His substitutions had the highest number of goals in the Premier League and assists and all whatnot last season. And this season is that is not just working for us, you know. So all I'm trying to say is the fact that maybe we as fans kind of affect the mentality of the players. And I'm not saying that's an excuse. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that's an excuse. They should be able to do their job regardless. They should be able to because most of these players they actually watch social media as well. And they when they see things going against them, it gets into their head. And I think this is where fans are a bit angry with the kind of players we have that maybe they don't have strong mentality to be able to handle the pressure. And maybe we have to go out there and get better players that have the mentality to be able to handle pressure. Well that well that, that's that's a different that's a different argument. You know, yeah. like the fact of the matter is they play for Arsenal Football Club. So yeah. if you if you play for Arsenal, it's a different mentality to say when you're playing for a team like Crystal Palace. It's yeah. a this is a different thing. Yeah. The, the the pressures are brought on to them, the pressures they've been used to from when they was brought in to, to, to play for Arsenal when they're in the youth teams and everything like that. I don't, I don't see that as an issue. But what, what, what the issue is, if you're telling somebody to play a position and they're not understanding it or not getting it, you know, like for instance, Torreira, you know, should be playing holding midfield player. He's played everywhere but this season. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? So mm. is that is that Torreira's fault that he can't play as well as Burkham? Or is it or is it the manager's fault for trying to think that he is a Burkham? You know, you've got Granit Xhaka playing a holding midfield role, which clearly is not his yeah. role. Yeah. But every single game he's played there. Yeah. So, you know, and and do, do you because suppose, of that, he's do, 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 do you suppose it's probably because he wants to he wants to make sure that he plays Wendozi because Wendozi has really stepped up. And yes, the reason I think I'm that's saying this. So sorry. Fantastic the, point. Yeah, fantastic it's, point. It's, it's fantastic because, point. Okay. The fact of the matter is. The, the two best players, you know, the, the players, Shaka played really well with Torreira in there last season. Exactly, there was, exactly. Some players where yeah. they played really well. 
Quindosi's coming into the side. And what he's done is he's tried to, to sh you, you know, the fact of the matter, you can't leave him out. Exactly. So, because he's been playing that well. So what he's trying to do, he's trying to cater and try and um, put Shaka in a different position to try and get him in. And that's what's good, you know. Basically what you've got to do is say, right, I'm going to go with the holding midfield player, which is going to be Terreira if that's the case. And and then it's going to either be Shaka or Gwendozi in that role. And would you think but what? That, but, would you think what? Well, because based on last moment. season, based on last season, let's be honest, based on last season, the partnership, the best partnership we had because. was Shaka and Torreira. Yeah, when Torreira yes, and Guendouzi, okay, so when, when Torreira and Guendouzi played, we noticed it didn't really work as well. They didn't take, and this must have been the problem. Exactly. So. so. It, it could be worse, but that, that's that's what the manager's getting paid for to make those decisions. Now, if that means leaving Quindosi out, the fans um, are not gonna, the then, fans are not gonna, the fans are not gonna find it likely. You well, know that. <laughs> well, of course they're not, because at the end of the day, he's been our best player. So you've got so 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 for me, scrap the idea that him two are the best player. If he's best midfield player, then you you find the players to suit around Quindosi now because he's the he's, he's the one. But we're not. What we're doing is trying to mix and match a little bit, like you know, um, and, and maybe it maybe you could be dead right on that because Gwendozi is here, there, everywhere, and it's, it's hard to find a partnership with somebody. Yeah. You know, yeah. in midfield, you know, so you go back to Vieira and Petit. They they um, they complement each, each other. other. Complement yeah, each other. Exactly. Yeah. So it could be well be that Gwendozi could be the problem, but. It's going to be very, very difficult to leave him out at the moment because yeah. he has been Arsenal's best player. Yeah. So for me, it would be, you know, and, and listen, you know, Torreira, let's, let's not get this right. Torreira has been no better than Shaka when he's played in that role, you know, because yeah. he, he he goes off off point. He, he, you know, his discipline is is poor. Yeah. You know, what I mean, like, you know, so if um if I, if he plays tomorrow, I want to see him playing in a position where he's just sitting in front of the back four and doing what he's meant to be doing. And if he's not going to do it, come January, get rid of him and get someone in that will. We've got to be a little bit more ruthless. Yeah. Okay, cool. Liverpool Arsenal. Do you think if we win that game, yeah? Do you think if we win that game, do you think no, Emery is going to be forgiven? <laughs> <laughs> Personally, at this moment in summer, I can't see Arsenal winning many games, let alone a game Liverpool away. I'm going to say this today. It depends on what team Liverpool pick. If they pick the team that played in the in the last round, then I think that we we'd be stronger than them and we'll go through. If they put out their best team, we ain't got a prayer. If they put out a squad, it's going to be. Well, I think we've got some exciting players. I would love it to have been at home because I think we'd have been a bit, you know, I think a better chance of winning it. But the, the, listen, the likes of Martinelli have, uh, will play. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I love him. Uh, I love Martinelli. Yeah, I, I love yeah. him. I think he's and, and be not a just because of, for us. not just because of the goals, but there's something about his positioning sense. Yeah. There's something about how he yeah. uses the ball. There's something about the runs he makes. There's this level of maturity in decision making, which I love about him, and he's not scared. And no, he's excited. He's excited, yeah, because he uses the ball well. That's that's yeah. for me. That for me, for me as a footballer, what I like the most is a way where you can include your teammates and the way where you can use the ball and take advantage of the ball. Even if you're not going to score goals, what you do with the ball, how you can keep possession, not lose possession, find a way to get your teammates involved. Yeah. And if your teammates are not going to be involved, you do the, the work. And his positioning has been massive. The way he comes from nowhere, I think he's got about two headers or three headers now. Yeah. It's, 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 for it, but do you know what I mean? I'd like to see him up front with with the big boys. That's you know the what problem. I mean? But that's not going to happen. The, exactly, that's it's the problem. Happen. He's in a situation whereby if you play Martinelli as an example in a game and say, hang on, this guy is doing well, I want to play him up front. And you bench Aubameyang, which is never going to happen, but just say for instance you bench Aubameyang and we lose the game. The whole world is going to go on Emery. Why the hell are you going to play Aubameyang? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, so, it's such a job. Exactly. It's so so he's going to have to be a little bit patient. But tomorrow I think that they'll line up with, with Martin Elisacco and um, Maitland Niles as a three. Uh, um, you know, that's another topic. That's another topic I do want to get into Maitland Niles, honestly. I would have loved to, but... Yeah. But I'd, like, I'd like to see Lacazette play, but he can't play three games in, a, in, in the feed. So they're going to play the squad tomorrow. And But, you know... They need they need game time to see what what they do. Uh, uh, it'd be interesting, it'd be very interesting to see what team he picks tomorrow. Very interesting because if he does pick Lacazette, you know it's a big gamble 
playing him three games, even yeah. though he needs the minutes. Yeah. To put to say, right, well, you know, you're playing three games in six days is going to be a tough ask. Yeah. So, it'll but, be very but, but I still think he's gonna, I still think he's gonna play um, some of, he's gonna mix it up a bit. I don't think Liverpool are just gonna use the second team all through. I still think they're gonna mix it up a bit. Let's just say, you know, Liverpool defenders. I, I can't see Liverpool taking a gamble with their front three because mm -hmm. they've got bigger fish to fry. So, you know, it'd be an interesting team selection tomorrow. Interesting. I think, you know, so definitely Torreira will play. Uh, Willock will definitely play. Yeah. Whether he'll play Sobias or that's going to be a, 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 another one. And, and it'd be very interesting to see if Tierney plays again. Again, another one, three games in six yeah, days. Yeah, so. and I think he got gassed out and tired in the game. That's why yeah, that's so, moment, so, you know, it'd be interesting. Obviously, Rob Holden will come into the side. What about so it'd be very interesting, very interesting what team he's going to pick tomorrow. Bellerin will obviously start, and that's more game time for him. You reckon, you reckon he's going to be more stuffy and holding? Yeah, I think it will be like, you know what I mean? I think that, um, I don't know if soccer sees his travel, but um, yeah, I would say with that there. Don't forget you've got Mavra, Mavra Popolos to come back in at yeah. some stage as well. Yeah. Dino, I like to call him because I can say that he's, yeah. <laughs> His name is too hot. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, but, you know, he needs to have some sort of game time at some stage. Mm. But don't forget we've got the Europa League games coming up where we're already virtually... Yeah, I think we game. need one more win and... Um, well, yeah, so we, we, we get that and um, we can probably use a few more of the players over, over the course of... Uh, you know, like November and December. Okay, cool. Sounds good to me. Anyway, um, are you going for the game? Because I'm not. No, I'm not going to the game tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to watch it. Why is that? Is that because um, you've got to be worn out by Arsenal? Or? Oh, I've got, I'll, I've got, uh, I've got work commitments tomorrow, so I can't, uh, I can't. You know, it's getting up, you have to, you have to, get up to Liverpool, but you, you can't get it back. So, work <laughs> commitments. Uh, you know, because we've had these Monday night games and Manchester and Sheffield ain't been very good. So for work commitments, yeah. that's what I'm, I'm going to stick to that as well. Like, you know, so. All right, well, you have to make some bills, huh? you have to make some money, sorry. That's it, like. And pay some bills. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lee, thank you very much, really. I'm going no, to be doing, um, so. I'm gonna be doing this uh, a bit more. Um, yeah, because I just need to find some time to get, you know, because everyone is busy, you know, yourself, you're going to make some money now, you know. So it's quite yeah. difficult to get people on here, but I'm, I'm going to make it a frequent thing to do. Uh, it's quite interesting yeah, to good have. Good luck with it, like, you know what I mean? So oh, yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. to thank you, thank you very much. come on first, so thank you very much. <laughs> I really appreciate you joining, though. Thank you very no, much. Really. I really no appreciate it, yeah.